I thought I'd do a video today on uh, the instrument panel on uh, my 1958 J35 Bonanza uh, November triple four x-ray. Uh, had several comments in the videos lately about people wanting to know uh, what it's like. Uh, this particular airplane is well equipped and uh, I was lucky enough to, to find one that had all the stuff on it I like. Uh, and there's some give and some take in the whole process. I think you'll uh, you'll learn something about how uh, that whole thing comes into play if you ever get ready to buy yourself an airplane. I hope you enjoy. So triple four x-ray has uh, a wonderful complement of newer old what we call steam gauges or round gauges in the ever loved uh, non-conventional arrangement that you see here of all these round things just spread out across a fairly low you know profile instrument panel and uh, it's always amazed me how you know a bonanza which is a pretty darn roomy airplane uh can have such a hard time finding a place for everything that you need to work with to fly it and that's kind of the case here it does have a little glove box which is which is handy and i a lot of people end up taking this space over and putting something in but working from right to left, one of the crucial engine uh, power management uh, instruments over here on the whole power management cluster uh, is this fuel flow or fuel pressure gauge. It does a really a pretty good job of telling me what's going on with the engine. Uh, you actually see green marks on here. Uh, for given power settings during climb. Uh, and I use it in combination with all of the engines on this side of the cluster here. And let's go ahead and turn on stuff so that, so that you guys can see it. Uh, so fuel pressure in pounds per square inch is displayed on here. And I've learned to equate that to fuel flow. Uh, RPM, obviously, a crucial engine gauge. Uh, this guy tells you, you know, how many times the, air, the airplane's propellers are rotating, you know. But uh, 2,000, 2,500 RPM is sort of that green range that you see the little green mark there. Uh, in a complex, high-performance airplane like this, it has a variable pitch propeller or constant speed propeller you have a manifold pressure gauge, which you, you balance with the rotational speed of the prop with the amount of, uh, of uh, energy the engine is, is reproducing at a given time. And then my favorite instrument in the entire airplane is this, is this uh, graphic engine monitor down here, which gives me all six cylinders and shows uh, what but we're looking at an exhaust gas temperature or and cylinder head temperature and compare the two. This really helps optimize the leaning process, making sure that the engine is burning clean, as cleanly as possible, you know, clean fuel burn. Uh, and of course the old turn and bank indicator. Uh, Keeping that ball centered. It's real easy in a V-tail Bonanza. The thing actually has coupling, as you notice here, when you when you move the ailerons, or when you move the rudder pedals. 
are coupled together with a bungee cord. So flying a V-tail can get you to be a little lazy because it's just so easy to keep the thing coordinated. Uh, I get back into old Cessnas and stuff like that and I really have to refocus on what the you know use of the rudder is all about to keep an airplane coordinated. And then the infamous <laughs> piano keys. That's what everybody talks about when they see this airplane. But uh, they're actually really high quality. I mean, I, I love this old style stuff. I've been an old hi-fi guy. It's really my, you know, my uh, uh, work life is all about uh, electronics and stuff. But, you know, I, I kind of like the old school stuff. I have vacuum tube amplifiers I listen to in my stereo system. And I like, I like this old school thing so I don't really have a problem with them they're very positive you know when you've when you've turned them on and when you have them off obviously the old gear deal here is the thing everybody talks about it does have a little trigger down here that you have to release to uh, to do something with it right so let's go ahead and turn this stuff back off because we're not really looking at it right now uh, since the ADS-B went in, I have to keep the nav lights on all the time. That's the power source uh, for that process. Uh, down underneath here, you've got this little panel that flops down. And it's got all kinds of cool old stuff like, you know, <laughs> I just love getting in here and reading it. This has been replaced where you change between rotator beacon and pedo heat in the airplane. You can't have both of them going at the same time. Uh, you also have all this stuff like flares and, you know, back in the 50s, man, they did some crazy stuff. Uh, but it's telling you where your circuit breakers are uh, and the two, you know, your two power management switches. Actually down underneath here are a whole bunch more circuit breakers. So you kind of need to learn all that stuff when you're flying it. Flying the engine settings is all done uh, in, a, in, a, in fact, flying a Bonanza in general, the, uh, the smoothness of operation of the throttle is something that really impressed me. Uh, I was just commenting to somebody on, on YouTube about talking about a V35B, a good client friend of mine took me for a ride in his V35B while I was getting my my very first flying lessons. And uh, having flying around in 152s and 172s and stuff, I was so impressed with his smoothness of operation and flying as he as he came in for a landing and literally just adjusting the speed of the engine by just rotating this vernier throttle and uh, you know you use this all the time it's wonderful it makes the airplane uh, uh, the flight in the airplane seem so smooth and so easy all, all of these guys adjust through verniers like that so that you can get just the right settings uh, this is really weird part about this particular bonanza I don't know if it's true for others you guys can comment and let me know but if this switch is off, there's no power to anything, whether the battery and alternator switches are on or not. So everything goes through this little switch right here. And uh, in addition to, to that, little, that little issue, you know, the lights and stuff, uh, it'll, it'll dim. When you turn the lights on, it'll dim the gear lights. <laughs> So you really have to work to see those when you're flying it during the daytime with lots of ambient light in the cockpit and you have any light on. And in this case now, I have to keep the nav lights on all the time. So the gear down or gear up light indicator lights are really hard to see. Now this one, these two guys were added to improve visibility at some point in the airplane's uh, 60 something years of life and then here recently uh, my uh, 
avionics guy added two mortal LEDs that are tied to the nose wheel. So I actually have an indicator of a nose wheel up and down here, as well as the mechanical indicator down on the floor that tells you physically where that nose wheel is. So uh, these are some of the things that you're looking at when you're, when, you're, when you're flying. Right over on the other side, you have flaps up and down. This little instrument cluster still works. It's got a crack in it, but I like the old school look. It appeals to me. Uh, the previous owner or one of the previous owners put this little yellow caution light on here. I mean, a uh, piece of tape really all is caught, not a light, but a little marker to give you warnings where you are and fuel. And management and fuel on this airplane is a whole another topic. Probably have to do a whole video on that. But, uh, and when you move above that, you've got your vertical speed indication and your altitude. So, you know, they're grouped in, they're grouped in sort of uh, logical clusters. You have your engine management stuff over here on the right, which is common on a lot of airplanes. Uh, of course, the ball indicator is not necessarily an engine deal, but it's there. Uh, then you've got your your altitude or vertical sort of stuff. Then right above that is this little box on the dash, which has a wind-up clock, your outer marker beacons, indicators, and very important instrument, the vacuum suction gauge. So, move on across, you've got flight instruments over here now. This airplane is equipped, uh, very nicely equipped. That's one of the things I was very, it was not only was it in the town that I live in when I got ready to buy it, but it also had all the stuff on it I was looking for. And the, 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 the two things that were, or three things really, that were really important to me were the Garmin 430 WAS, which will do fully, uh, well, in this case, coupled with the uh, STEC 30, which is built into this instrument over here. The second most important instrument in the airplane that I, w that I really wanted to have or sort of required when I was getting ready to buy was an autopilot with uh, altitude hold, at least, if not full on uh, automated altitude control. But uh, this airplane has the STEC 30 autopilot in it, which will allow me to. Uh, you fly full instrument approaches. It'll handle all the all the navigation part of it. I'll have to manage the altitude hold stuff with this button right here. Altitude uh, engage and disengage. Whenever I've hit the altitude that I want to, I can hold that altitude. So that uh, some airplanes actually can sit there and regulate your vertical speed, do all kinds of uh, stuff, fly the entire approach for you. I have to, I have to be careful on the step downs on instrument approaches, but uh, all the rest of the uh, stuff, including holds, it'll, it'll, uh, it'll intercept a hold and go into a holding pattern and do the whole thing for you. The third and most important thing I was interested in, of course, was uh, an HSI. The horizontal situation indicator is Overlays, you know, your your the direction you're traveling with the navigation uh, data. So you'll see these two little guys right here. This is really a critical element of the of, of flying the airplane. Uh, when everything's lined up, it's all one straight yellow line. If you're off of uh, off of course, this center section will be off either direction you need to, to do, which will coordinate with what you see on the GPS and on the iPad. So those were the three most important things that I that I was looking for uh, in the airplane. So as you keep moving around the panel, we have our intercom control here, uh, and and uh, intercom management where you can regulate which radio you want to hear over the speakers or over the headphones, and which one you're transmitting on, so on and so forth, is regulated uh, by this Bendix King uh, 134 here. Uh, of course, the 430 WAS does full on. Uh, precision GPS approaches. And as I said earlier, we'll couple to the uh, autopilot. My secondary radio in this aircraft 
is also a Bendix King digital flip-flop radio, which is a great backup radio. I'm quite happy with that orientation. Down underneath here, we have some good old-fashioned toggle switches to manage the state of the autopilot and which navigation system you want to use with that. More circuit breakers. Uh, an old-school turn the knob. Find it here. Turn the knob transponder. Uh, and over here, I can uh, reset the graphic engine monitor and uh, make adjustments to the navigation system, uh, as well as arm disarm the ELT. And another instrument that took some getting used to in this aircraft uh, was this little guy here, which, which tells you how much voltage your electrical system is uh, generating at a given time. And then when you press a button down here, it, uh, which the knob has come off of, I need to get down here and find it, uh, it'll change over and tell you how much current you're drawing. So you have to hit a button to do that. That's probably less than optimum, but not something that's been bothering me a whole lot. And on a Bonanza, you've only got brakes on the pilot side. The passenger side will fold out of the way, which is kind of nice. Uh, that and combined, of course, my, my aircraft has a dual yoke configuration, which is... Uh, which I really, really enjoy having, so the person in the right seat can fly when they want to. But in some of the models, you have just a single yoke that flips over, and then you fold those pedals out of the way. Uh, your your uh, co-pilot or passenger on the front of the airplane uh, is pretty relaxed and free, uh, open space. And Bonanza has a lot of room. That's one. Of the, I'm a, I'm six feet tall, 200 pounds. So I found that pretty important when I was selecting an airplane as well. Uh, the HSI and the backup radio both have vertical navigation integrated into them, so we can intercept glide slopes on either one of the two. I generally can set up a GPS approach on one, set up a, a VOR-based uh, approach on the second one simultaneously if I want to track the two. It's, it's pretty nice. Uh, this cluster in the middle, which... I just really love the old style look of these Beechcraft aircraft like this, but uh, uh, you have to throw a switch to indicate which one of the fuel gauge up here is going to be relevant to which one of these two switches you have, you know, you have selected here. The main left and right tanks will change what's being fed to this indicator. Uh, the aux fuel down here stays on aux all, all the time, but you switch it over here to change back and forth between the left and right fuel tanks, which cross feed to each other automatically, but you check one against the other. And then your good old school oil temperature gauge, uh, which uh, I could definitely use a more precise instrument there, but it's working well. It tells me when I'm in, in the green and whether it's, you know, when the engine is working hard. Uh, cylinder head temperature is still hooked up and working in tandem with my graphic engine monitor, which gives me accurate information about each and every cylinder head in the engine. And that, that uh, is a crucial element. Uh, this graphic engine monitor coupled with the GAMI injector system on the engine uh, gives me the ability to, to really optimize fuel flow and, and, uh, and optimize the performance of the uh, aircraft's power plant when flying. So oil pressure's down here. That puppy needs to, to uh, uh, you know, wake up when you first get going. Uh, and I do have a charge and discharge indicator here, which I believe at this point uh, is still coupled, but I use uh, this guy down here really uh, to measure exactly how much current's being drawn by uh, what load is on the alternator or battery, depending on what state you're in. Uh, avionics switch here. Needs to be on if you want all that stuff to work. Uh, so across the piano keys, you got the left, 
right main tank selecting the fuel deal we talked about and the which really the left or the right auxiliary the aux fuel pump actually has two positions it has a, a slow and high uh, and if you put that on high when the engine's idling it'll kill the engine it floods it so much uh, and then you've got uh, an indicator for the fuel pump, which which comes on and off. This guy here does not function. Your flaps up and down. Flaps are on the left side. Always the easiest one to see, and ones you're working with all the time. And when you get ready to raise the gear, you reach across the panel and you come over here. And I always confirm. I look at that up and down landing gear, and it has a little tire on it, so you can feel the difference between that and flaps. I've gotten several comments about people who think this is like the most dangerous thing in the world to fly this airplane because of the way this is done. Well, you know, my experience has been uh, landing gear, you know, is such a critical element to flying a uh, high performance uh, retractable like this that uh, I look at the gauge every time I get ready to raise or lower the gear and confirm it. And, uh, uh, they are not right next to each other, and the one on the far away is the one that you got to be the most careful about. Raising and lowering the flaps when you don't want to, certainly not a good thing to have happening, but raising the gear when you don't want to is a critical mistake. So underneath here is a little lever you have to push to the side to release this, this switch when you get ready to do that. That's true for the flaps as well. You have to push this this way, and then... And then and then raise it so uh, as we keep moving across here you got your light controls landing and taxi which in this case are both uh, labeled landing but uh, one one lens is a little wider than the other uh, nav lights in this case that's also my ADS-B power feed so that guy's got to stay on all the time now and that's placarded as so below here and the strobe which is a little red light flashing light up on the top that we saw up there. These guys look like keys, but they're not. This one's actually good old cigarette ash <laughs> tray. Back, can you imagine that back in the day, man? You flying around in one of these things full of 100 LL and smoking cigarettes at the same time. But uh, I'm not a smoker, so it doesn't look like it's ever really had a smoker. So it's nice and clean in there. So we, we looked at the at the glove box. Uh, turning bank indicators shows your autopilot stuff as well. Let's see what else have we got on here. Altimeter. All these gauges are really new uh, looking. I mean, obviously they've been in the airplane for a while, but but the box up top with the clock, suction gauge, and uh, our you know marker beacons for ILS approaches. And I put a vertical card compass in the. In, in it when the old whiskey model started uh, leaking fluid all over everything. So we, we got that replaced here not too long ago. Speed indicator, airspeed indicator. The inner circle is nautical miles per hour and the other one is statute miles per hour. So you, uh, you can simultaneously can just look right at it and see, you know, what, what speed is what. Uh, the, all this instrumentation lighting is old school incandescent little bulbs here. I used to be really worried about it before I did the alternator upgrade on the engine, but uh, now my eyesight's not great at night anyway. I'm fine. Uh, I have to wear glasses in the cockpit required by my medical certificate. But uh, uh, the, the instrument panel is uh, marginally lit in this airplane. Uh, and I have taken it out at this point because I really don't fly a whole lot at night anymore. But I had an LED strip that just plugs into the cigarette lighter that I use when I'm flying at night. And uh, that, that really did, uh, that, really, that really makes the airplane more enjoyable to fly in the evening. So that's the cockpit view of the 1958 J35 uh, Bonanza. And I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll try to get to answering them.